Hello, welcome to Noetic. I am CJ, and today we will take a look at Michelle de Montaigne's essays. The essay we will be jumping into today is the 32nd essay of Book 1. It's titled, That We Should Soberly Meddle with Judging the Divine Ordinances. I will be using the Tretchman translation. Montaigne starts out by discussing imposture. What does this word even mean? It is a 16th century word that has faded out of common usage. If I were to translate this word, it would mean what one does as an imposter, pretend to be someone else in order to deceive others. Imposters, Montaigne writes, center their deception around things unknown, that which does not come from ordinary experience. The future is the prime example of this unknown. You do not, for instance, know what the future holds for your love life. There are multiple ways it could go without your knowledge of the conclusion. An imposter, then, deceives you by claiming to know this future. In consulting with your astrological sign, the imposter can profess to know that your soulmate is right around the corner and give you the exact date and time and location. Montaigne says that this is what astrologers, palm readers, and the like specialize in, making us believe in things that we know least about, entertaining us with fictions about the future. With this essay, Montaigne wants to focus on a specific group of imposters, and I'll use a quotation, quote, a pack of people, interpreters and ordinary record keepers of the designs of God, who profess to find out the causes of every event, to see into the secrets of the divine will and discover the incomprehensible motives of its works, end quote. In short, people who meddle with judging the divine ordinances. But before we describe these impostors further, let us set up a contrast. Let us shortly describe those who do not meddle with judging the divine ordinances. Montaigne thinks it is enough for one to believe that all things come from God. Further, this person submits his own reason and judgment to God's will. While one has an outline of God's plan for them, he should not pretend to know all the details. These particulars fall into things unknown. The problem for Montaigne is when we flip the equation, when we submit God's will to our reason and judgment. People pretend to have knowledge of things unknown. Instead of attributing them to a palm reading, they attribute them to God's will. Any success strengthens the belief that God is on his or her side. People pray to God in order to keep good things happening. Faith is strengthened by worldly results. Montaigne encountered this kind of thinking in his lifetime during the French Wars of Religion. The conflict pitted the Catholics against the Reformed Protestants. Montaigne had a unique perspective in the wars by being respected by both the Catholic and Protestant leadership in France. With this advantage, he served as a moderating force, giving advice to both sides. What Montaigne noticed was that both parties believed that God was with them. They took pains to justify their cause and connect it in accordance with God's will. Montaigne thought that each side was twisting themselves into pretzels by using this kind of reasoning. Let's look at one such pretzel. Montaigne gives an instance when the Protestants won a battle and then lost two engagements soon after. This is Montaigne's account in the essay. Quote, the Protestants afterwards came to excuse their misfortune by saying that if they had not a people wholly at their mercy, it was because they were being chastised and scourged by a fatherly hand. They make it quite clear that they are taking double payment for grinding one sack of corn and blowing hot and cold with the same breath, end quote. 
This excuse does not hold for Montaigne. It ends up being both illogical, double payment for one sack of corn, and a contradiction, hot and cold with the same breath. God's plan does not neatly conform to human reasoning. It would be better, Montaigne proclaims, to explain to them the true foundations of truth. And what is that? We probably have a good idea of it now. The truth is that when we would reduce divine things to our scale, they suffer for it. God deprives us of the power to explain the total future, the total outline of his plan. In the end, we have something else to hope for greater than worldly success. We have something else to fear for more than worldly failure. Salvation, damnation, these things are not attached to worldly results. These greater things are of themselves connected to our faith in God alone. Montaigne ends the essay with an analogy. We must be content with the light that we get from the sun. But if we stare at it in hopes to get more light, let us not think it strange if we lose our sight. In summation, there should be a contentment in what God provides, a contentment that we see in the lilies of the field and the birds of the air that Jesus describes in the Sermon on the Mount. This contentment is faith. Trouble arises, however, when we move beyond this contentment, when we try to glean the particulars of God's will and force it to revolve around our desires. This is an act of futility, leading to the spiritual blindness that Montaigne saw during the French Wars of Religion. The difficult task, then, is to check our faith. When we pray to God about a loved one who is sick, how much are we actively content with whatever outcome takes place? How much are we praying to God to force the situation into our favor? The Lord's Prayer states, Thy will be done. With this essay, Montaigne wants us to remind ourselves constantly about whose will is to be done. Thank you all for listening. If you'd like to look at more, check out the Noetic app, which you can find on the App Store and Google Play. You can also check us out on SoundCloud and YouTube. Take care.